Okay, this video is kind of an introduction to something called a rational expression. And a rational expression, that's kind of a math, math words for um, basically, a, I call it a, a messy fraction. It's a really ugly fraction, well sometimes ugly, depends on your opinion, but it's, a, it's just a fraction that has variables in it, x's and y's or a's and b's, so I just call it a messy fraction. And we're going to start out with um, basic ones today, kind of looking at them. So think back to when you learned about fractions. Back in middle school when you were studying fractions, if I gave you the fraction 3 over 3, what's 3 over 3 equal to? Yeah, one whole. 3 divided by 3 is 1. If I gave you the fraction 12 over 12, what's 12 over 12 equal to? Same thing, 1. 12 divided by 12 is 1. So if I gave the fraction 2,375 over 2,375, what would you say it equals? Same thing, 1. There's a pattern here. They're all equal to 1 because they're the same thing on the top, the same thing on the bottom. So if I threw a variable in there and said, okay, let's do it with x, what do you think x over x is going to equal to? What's x over x going to be? It's going to be 1, just like all of these other things. X's are two numbers. We don't know what they are, but if X is 5, then this is 5 over 5. If X is 10, then this is 10 over 10. And those are all equal to 1. In your math book, in your textbook, a lot of times the book shows it like this. When they find these 1's, they put a big giant number 1 around it, like this. And they say the whole thing equals 1. So like around these 12's, I could put a big giant 1 around it. And they call these things, these big red ones that I'm drawing, they call these things the power of one. Uh, the power of one is just, one's kind of a special number, so if you can find things that make a one, that's what we're going to be working on. So to give you kind of a different example here, let's say you had something like 4x over 6x. Right away when I see this problem, I see a power of 1, the x's. And you can draw a big 1 around them, or if you want, you can just circle them. I'm probably just going to circle them from now on. But you see them right there. So really, I just have 4 over 6. And I can change 4 and 6. What do you multiply to get 4 if I wanted to change it to something? What multiplies to 4? 2 times 2. What multiplies to 6? 2 times 3. So if I change it to 2 times 3 and 2 times 2, you see another power of 1. You see these 2's that are also going to go away, which means the real answer is just 2 thirds. And that's what's left is 2 thirds, power of 1. So we're going to try some more algebra ones, ones with x's and y's and different variables in it. And we're going to be looking for the power of 1. And so we're going to do some examples. We're going to do 5x squared over x to the third power. I'm going to start making them harder. Right when I see this problem, the first thing I do is I rewrite it. 5x squared, x squared means x times x. So I break it up into x times x. x to the third means x times x times x three times. If you break it up into little pieces, you can find all the power of 1's. So I see these are a power of 1, and these are a power of 1, and what are you left with? You're left with a 5 on top, and what's left on bottom? x. And that's your answer. Power of 1. We simplified it. So now you try one, maybe pause the video for this one. See if you're getting this idea down. What do you think about this one? If I gave you 3 a b over 5 a squared b. Try it. Pause the video and see if you can get it right. Okay, so here's what you do. You have 3 a b. Not a lot you can do with 3 a b. But on the bottom, a squared is a times a times b. So this is what I have. So what I'm going to do is go through and I'm going to circle the A's and the B's and I think I can't circle anything else 
So my answer on top is 3, and my answer on bottom is 5a, and I'm done. 3 over 5a. Now they can get much harder than this, and they can have some weird answers. So let me show you some other types. Another one here. Let's say you had uh, 2x squared y to the third over 4xy squared. It's just getting bigger is all it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the 2, and the x squared is going to be x times x, and the y to the third is going to be y times y times y, and I'm going to do the same thing on bottom. What can you change a 4 into? What multiplies to 4? 2 times 2. x is just an x, and y squared is y times y. So I'm going to go through and circle my power of 1s. There's a bunch of them now. We've got uh, some 2s. Uh, We've got a set of x's. we got a lot of y's here. And what's left on the top? we got an x and a y. So we can write what's left on the top is we got x and a y. And on bottom, the only thing left is a 2. So it's xy over 2. And that's our answer. All of the examples I'm, I'm showing you in this first video have a name. All of them, well, I've kind of named them, is they're called basic problems. They're basic, which I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. I like basic problems. Um, they don't have any adding or subtracting involved. No plus signs and no minus signs. So basic fractions are fractions with no adding and no subtracting. So I'm going to put a little note over here about this. There's no adding or subtracting. No adding or subtracting. If there's no adding or subtracting, you can go straight into this power of one business where you break it out into little pieces and you circle the power of ones. And it's really nice. It's actually really fast. So I'm looking at no adding and no subtracting. So before we end the video, you should try a couple. So try this one. See if you got this down. Take something like uh, 3ab squared over 9a squared b squared and find the power of 1. So try it. Pause the video. Do it yourself first. Okay, so here's what you hopefully did. You have 3a and then b squared is b times b. And on bottom, the 9, I would change the 9 into 3 times 3. a squared is a times a. And b squared is b times b. And look at all the power of 1's you have. You have uh, these 3's. You have the a's. You have some b's. You have a couple of b's. And you're not left with a lot. Look, the only things left are a 3 and an A. So 3A is the only thing left. But notice where the 3A is. Is it in the bottom or the top of the fraction? It's in the bottom. If 3A is in the bottom, something still needs to be on top. What do you think it's going to be? Not 0 if you guess 0. What are all of these called? They're called power of 1 because they're all 1s. So what do you think is going to go on top? A 1. The answer is going to be 1 over 3a, because that's what's left on top of the fraction. So we got 1 over 3a. And these are the basic power of 1 problems. So if you watch the next video, if you think you got this down, go to the next video, because I'm going to teach you how to do a, a pull-out problem, a dividing by a greatest common factor. Make it a little harder.